P times W minus D. So this is a general equation. Why I say we must stick ahead because when you are doing the repair, you must think ahead. How many row that you are going to install? Okay. For example, this is a drawing. And this is the one hour section. We cut it out. And let's say we put the W here. So you must now think how many row that we are going to install. For example, if you install one row. So basically, there is one D here. Because what is tension? Tension is the area that it carries is from first the thickness okay, that's why T and then W minus D this is the area so if you drill one hole it means this is the formula but if you you are planning to do two row so there will be one two two d okay so that's why we must stick ahead okay so i would suggest we do one row because usually normally yeah for extrusion part it is advisable to do one row Okay, one row of rivets. So this is the formula, FTU sixty four thousand psi T zero point zero six four and okay, what's the width of our repair part? Ah, this is interesting. Again, I draw back. What is tension? Tension is the load that want to break this repair part. Okay, so it is acting this way. P. P. So let's say you install one here. Okay. So you want to cut. Is part out. Okay, so the width is going to be from here to here. So this is W. Ah. Okay, so this is the W, which is two inches. Diameter six over thirty-two. Ah. Okay, so two minus six over thirty-two. Okay, because if there is no there hole, no problem, just times by two. But currently, practically, there's it going to be hole because we are installing the fastener. Okay. Okay. So what's the value? Sixty-four thousand times zero point zero six four times. Two minus six over thirty-two. Seven thousand two hundred. Sorry, seven hundred four hundred twenty-four pound. Okay, seven hundred. Sorry, seven thousand four hundred twenty-four pound. Okay. Any question? FPU, thickness of part, width of part, diameter of us. Okay. So please write down this value before we go and find our number number three question. Okay.
Sudah kan? Sudah ni Okay next Third question Okay Let me bring this up Okay Job loss already Finish What's the value of Shear P allowable shear 1,049 pound Okay Okay, why do you Why do we calculate failure mode? Okay, this is a conventional way Of solving Our uh, In the in, in determining Our number of fastness From four of this Value, which one is the lowest Value? Bearing, correct? So it means that bearing have the lowest value At 468 pound Bearing will fail first So basically bearing is The most critical one Compared to others Others 1,000 5,000 and 7,000 So bearing is 468 pound So conventionally How do we find the numbers of fastener Numbers of fasteners. There are at least two ways. Eh? The first one is if the allowable load for one fastener is given. So P load loss over P allowable one fastener. This is. 1049 That is A typical way To solve it But In our case We must take The critical value So our critical value is Bearing value P Allowable Lowest Or critical So P Load loss Is 2000 What's the value? 2049 eh? 2049 Over 468 So you get 2049 Divide by 468 4.38 Okay And then it times by two. Okay. Sorry, we before times by two, four point three eight, approximately five. Okay, units of rebate is needed. Times by two, so total is ten fasteners required. Okay. Ten fastness is required. But sir, if we take one zero four nine, is it okay? Also okay. It is okay for the fastener, but the bearing will fail. You will see after few cycle of flight, there is going to be bearing failure. What is bearing failure? Bearing failure is a common failure, common failure. Fastener and then It is visually You can inspect it visually Okay Bearing failure It is a failure between The Fastener and repair part Okay So we found the total of Fastener Question number 3 Finish Okay now We look into Question number 4 Okay Question number 4 You are required to draw your proposed Repair design 
includes edge margin, which is 2D, hole margin or pitch margin, which is 4D, and we are required to determine reserve factor and margin of safety. Okay, before we draw it, let's determine reserve factor, margin of safety, and the dimension of the doubler. What's the dimension of the doubler? Okay. One of the important thing for the doubler is it needs to be thicker than the original part. The Airbus and also Boeing stated that it must be one gauge higher. Previously, when uh, the Boeing conduct a structure repair classes, they put a margin for aluminium AL. 2024, it must be 25% thicker. But for AL7075, the doubler must be 35% thicker. Okay? So that was long time ago, but currently, nowadays in the SRM, they are preparing the table. One gauge higher. Okay, they are already the table. So, for us, we take 24, 25% more. So it means that the first thing, thickness of our doubler needs to be 1.25 times 0 0.064 inches. So you will get 0 0.08 inches. This is a compulsory. The doubler must be not less than 0 0.08 if lesser, it will not restore back the stiffness of the repair. Okay? So this one, you either can do a single shear or double shear. If single shear, so your sheet metal, the thickness is going to be 0 0.08. If double shear, it's going to be 0 0.04 and 0 0.04 double shear. I mean, you sandwich the uh, original part. So that's the first one, thickness. Second one, what about the length of the doubler? Okay? So this is a sketch of the original part. And you will install it like this. Okay, that's why I put the dimension like this. Eh? It's not 8. Eh? It is infinity. Okay? It's not 8. Okay. Numbers of fastener must be 10, not less. 1, 2, 3. Okay? And then, at the center here, there is what? a one-out section. One out section, we do not put fastener. You can put fastener there, but it does not carry load. Which part carry load? Fastener and doubler. So, one, two, three, four, and then five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. This is an example. I give you an example. Okay? I just want to give you what the length of your doubler, okay? So edge margin 2D, hole margin 4D, and from the fastener until the edge of our okay cut out part also must maintain 2D, okay? So, it's going to be 2, 4, 4, 4, 2, 3, 4, 4, 
other four, the other four and two. So our length of our doubler is going to be 2d times 1, 2, 3, 4 plus 4d times 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. eight. So 2 times 6 over 32 times 4 plus 4 times 6 over 32 times 8. Oh, sorry. I missed this part here. What's the value? He cut out 1.25. Yes. Don't forget about that. Okay. So... Not finished yet here. Plus 1.25 of inches. So plus 1.25 inches. 2 times 6 over 32 times 4 plus 4 times 6 over 32 times 8 plus 1.25. 8.75 inches So that's the length of our doublet Okay, what about the height? 2D and single row 2D So height of doublet 2D times 2 2 times 6 over 32 times 2 4 times 6 over 32 